<clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Harvard Report for January 16th, 2018. I am your host and the founder of Trade Academy, Keith Harwood. Uh, let's get right to the disclosures because there's some stuff that's just going on that's interesting in the market here, but I want to get this covered first. All services and content are provided for educational and information purposes only and are not intended as legal or financial advice. Make sure you read the rest of the disclosures. None of this is a trade recommendation. All of this is just the way that I look at the markets. As usual, I'm going to go through the normal equity indices and bonds and gold stuff and oil. Um, I am going to touch a little bit on the VIX because the VIX is important here. And I didn't add it in here, but that goes in hand with the equity indices. Um, it's telling us something about what's going on with the market. And I think that that's something you guys want to know. Um, first off, fear and greed, 81, extreme greed. So naturally, we would expect some sort of pullback here based upon that level. The only thing that's still staying in the fear uh, zone is the junk bond demand. But generally speaking, we're seeing a lot of greed in the markets as the market gets really extended to the upside. People talk about the RSI ratings and everything else. Uh, and the one thing that's really not coming down is actually the VIX. So people aren't selling options into this right. They're actually buying. I think this is kind of an interesting dynamic and it creates an interesting setup. Uh, let's go straight to the markets here. So first off, SPY, we see a good rally again this morning that has pulled back a little bit. I think this is natural. Every time we get these spikes, it's really hard for people not to want to take some money off the table. The slope of this 10-day moving average is accelerating. You note that on a one-day change, the 10-day moving average goes went from 273.88 to 274.89. So it's going up by a buck a day. That's a lot of momentum going on right now. The natural buying point, the natural support is rising by a buck a day right now at this current pace of momentum. That's important to me because I know that there should be some support at the 10-day moving and at the 10-day moving average and at the 20-day moving average. So as we continue to see this kind of move, uh, it basically rises, raises our support level really quickly. That'll probably slow down at some point probably some point soon. The market's going to get tired. It'll want to sit. That'll slow down this slope. But at that point, the moving averages can play that catch-up game that they like to play. You know, these other runs that we've had here, you know, this was a very steep tending moving average. I and mean, then we sat for about two weeks. And you know when that happened is, you know, a lot of these consolidation periods happen around earnings. We're getting into earnings season now. So to me, this is uh, setting up for a sideways market which I would normally love to play via a calendar, but let's, you know, when I look at the VIX, vol is not cheap. As we've rallied, somebody's been caught short calls. They have to cover all of their short option exposure. That pushes volatility up into a rally and also accelerates the rally. We probably see from that, I expect to see a little bit bigger ranges during the consolidation, but a lot of overall close to close slower movement. It's just intraday. I think we're going to see a lot more movement. Uh, so where I want to go real quick on this is actually over here into SPY and talk what, show what I'm talking about here in terms of volatility. So we saw in the VIX chart, but again, we see it here. Realize volatility isn't up that much because it's still been a one-way train. Where I have difficulty looking for those calendars is that oftentimes I'd look to buy some February and sell some January here saying that my close to close movement is not going to be that big. February vol is up over a percent today. So I need to see this type of volatility coming down in order to a calendar. What it actually fits better with for me is looking maybe out into the January 19th term. That's just to this Friday. But if I say that I think this week we actually probably just consolidate, I can look at a call butterfly. Expecting the market to settle in right around here between 279 and 280. Uh, I could look at something like the 278. 279 and a half, 281 call fly. This is a delta neutral strategy. I pay 32. If we pin at 279 and a half, it's worth a dollar and 50 cents. I'm not looking to play this all the way to the pin. I'm just looking for this as a way to play for some sideways action for a couple of days. Maybe it goes up to as much as a buck. If volatility falls back down to historical volatility levels of 6%, I can simulate that here and say 6% volatility on each of these strikes that I'm looking at. And you see the, the value here. This call butterfly is now worth 51 cents in that case. So for me, this is a really interesting way to play for this chopping market with a little bit of maybe a drift higher, maybe a drift lower, but 
really we're just going to probably stay side a little more sideways while we wait for the 10-day moving average and the 20-day moving average to catch up. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this right now. This is slightly on the bullish side. Um, and that's just because I have a feeling that there could be a one more good run higher back toward recent, towards these highs that we made today before pulling back again. So, you know, as this market shops, I think it's got a little bit of a drift higher based upon the slopes of those moving averages below. So this is something I'm looking at is this 278, 278, and a half, 281 call butterfly with vol high, implied volatility high. Let's go back to some charts here then. So we covered SPY there. Let's go to Q's. The Q's are basically the same. IWM is basically the same. IWM is a little bit slower moving today. IWM had a bigger move um, last Thursday. Look, all this stuff, anybody that's trying to get short is getting hurt right now. And so as those people continue to get hurt, these things have to continue higher. But as I said, I still think consolidation is the bigger play here. Um, the volatility, term structure, all that sort of stuff looks very similar between S&Ps and Qs. IWM is actually a little bit lower volatility. Uh, but you know, for me, it's still, I'm expecting volatility to come down during this point. And so I want to take advantage of that with SPY. Let's go over to the bonds. Um, TLT, what a crazy week last week. Dropped from 126 to 124 in a day all the way down below 123 and then pull right back up to 124. I mean, these ranges are insane, but we see it continuing to happen week after week. Big spike down, bounce. Big spike down, bounce. This is probably the extent of the bounce. You notice that the bounces are shallower now instead of the bounces, uh, instead of the falls being shallow. So we see during this uptrend, every time the market had a pullback, the pullback was higher than the previous low. Now we're seeing the, the jumps back, the bounce backs being lower than the previous high and the falls being lower than the previous low. So I'm looking right now at TLT being in a bearish mode, looking for that move down here towards 121 on the next big break. So for me to play that, I actually can do that again in the option space because TLT vault is not exceptionally expensive. While we've seen that vault picking up so much in the equity markets, TLT is still just kind of in the middle there, nine and a half, seven, nine to 10% and realized vault is closer to 11 this to me is an opportunity and I can do this very fairly short dated here looking about a week and a half almost two weeks out looking at these 123 and a half puts right there for 31 cents that's under 10 vol slightly more expensive than this but if I could get these for 30 cents that actually gives me some really good leverage for that move down like I said towards 122 or 121 so TLT January 26 123 and a half puts a lot of leverage out of those and I'm gonna look at those a little bit later today especially as we see today's move started higher and had been drifting lower. All right, let's keep going here. Um, let's go to USD JPY. I made a typo there. Let's try that one more time. So this has been my normal signal for gold. And I mentioned last week um, that I want to see where these moving averages kind of recenter after what was been, what went on with the, uh, the Bank of Japan last week. So over the course of this week, I think these moving averages just need to kind of catch up to the move that we saw from this day. Okay. Generally speaking, the location of the dollar relative to the yen is bullish to gold, but we can see that this starts to look like it's consolidating. A move back above today's high, 110.98, basically get us above 111, and I have to start leaning on the bear side of gold. We are a little bit extended to the downside in gold, of dollar yen, while... It's not as bad, as extreme as what I saw in equities. I think that this is a spot where we could see bonds fall, so yields rising. That could put some support into dollar yen and put some bearish pressures on gold. And so that's where I look at the GLD chart and say, okay, well, we're way extended to the upside. So at a minimum, I'm thinking to move back to 124. GDX, I'm looking for a move back down towards 22 and a half, honestly, at least 23, maybe 22 and a half. GDXJ. We're looking for a move back below 33. That's a pretty big move potential there. And SLB would be the final one. And that's actually the weakest of the bunch. And that could actually get down towards 15 and a half. So really blow through some of these uh, early support levels. That should be the first to break. But I have to know where I can get my cheap volatility here because that's always my play in these names. If I go to GLD, cheap relative to where it was three months ago, but it's not really cheap relative to where it's been in the last couple weeks. That's not bad though. GDX, starting to find some support here. 
similar setup to GLD, but I really like to see GDX fall below 20% when I'm looking for this kind of move on the downside. GDXJ, it's not cheap enough right now. I need sub 25. And SLV, this looks like the cheapest to me. 17%. Realized vol has been low. It seems to be setting up a nice coil here for a potential big break. I have a couple of puts on already, some of this week's um, 16 puts. Those are up to 20 vol. I don't need to buy 20 vol in this week. I'm going to look back to next week. Look at these 16 puts, 16%. That's very cheap for SLV historically. 16% is right around here. So I like the SLV January 26th, 16 puts as a result of that, looking for a way to get some momentum. And I'll look at those again later today. Um, I'll put in some more ideas in oil on the options into my premium product, but for now in the newsletter that I'll be posting in a couple hours, but for now I'll, I'll talk through what I'm seeing as well. Oil looks a lot like what we're seeing in the equity markets and everything else. This had a big run. The 10 day moving average is providing some support. We're above all these previous highs and everything else. So oil still looks firm. If the dollar starts to strengthen, this could put a little bit of a headwind into oil and cause a greater pullback even down to the 20 day moving average. And the 20-day moving average right now is rising at about seven cents per day. 12.18 right now. If we had a pullback over, say, a course of a week, that would put it up towards about 12.50, 12.50-ish, and that could be our pullback level in USO. So something in this 12.40 to 12.50 range would be a reasonable pullback. In that process, I would expect then to see some consolidation in XLE with a potential pullback towards 76. That's not a huge trade. There is some way, or there are some ways to play it, but with volatility coming up so much in the oil names, which is natural given that this is having that same sort of spike as the rest of the equity markets, I think that this is a, uh, a more nuanced trade, and I'll talk through ways that I can play that, uh, similar to maybe the butterflies or calendars that I talked about in S&Ps. And of course, finally, OIH, the leveraged oil ETF to me, in that it, it has uh, a lot more leverage to the price of oil. Oil still above $60, per barrel. OIH really shouldn't see a huge bear move on a move in oil from 64 bucks. We'll just pull off the crude future here. If, I, if I'm looking at this on the future basis, I mean, a move from 64 down to 62 doesn't create a bearish scenario for these oil producers. It just creates a consolidation and pullback. And so I think with me, for me right now, the play in OIH and XLE is to play for a minor pullback consolidation before the next leg higher. And know that OIH is where I see a lot of leverage. Those moves to 31, 32, 33 are much more um, exciting here with oil trading around 65 or just under $65 a barrel. If oil gets anywhere near 70, this creates a huge explosion in OIH. And so that's where I want to have a long-term bias of looking at some cheap calls maybe that are a couple months out. But if I can get some cheap 32s or 33s, which I can't today, I'll show you why. So the vol thing again, vol spiking here. But if volatility comes down in that little uh, minor pullback, then that's where I'm going to be looking into some calls here. Um, and we just see that vol is not cheap enough right now for me to really want to get excited. Vol up almost 2% in March today. You know, this is kind of the term that I'd like to look back at. But those 32s and 33s, even at 30 cents, are a little bit pricey. If I have vol at 24%, we could see why that, you know, that gets me a lot more leverage when it's, 20 to 30 percent cheaper in terms of um, total premium paid. So for now, I'm in a waiting mode a little bit on OIH. But again, I, I know there's some nuanced ways to play this that I'll talk about in the newsletter. Speaking of the newsletter, the Harwood Report premium product uh, goes through more. I have the newsletter that goes out. I have a midweek update that goes out a video. I talk a little bit more about why I'm picking some of these option structures. And the first month is free. So there's no risk to you. If you like the content you're seeing here, you should try out the newsletter and the mid uh, midweek update that I give out as well. I'm only allowing that for the first 100 subscribers, and some of these have started to go. So you guys will need to act fast if you have any interest in getting that first month for free. After that, it's only $49 a month, cheaper than a lot of the premium products. But there's no commitment. There's no requirement to stay on. You try the first month for free. If you get value out of it, great. It'll help you hopefully make enough money that the $49 per month doesn't matter to you. If you're not getting any value out of it, obviously, I don't expect you to stay on. Give it a shot. Uh, I think it's a uh, good value here at $0 for the first month. That's about as cheap as things can get. Contact me, though. Uh, you know my website, tradeacademy.co. No M at the end. Email me, Keith, at tradeacademy.co. That's the best way to get a hold of me. And finally, you can call me, 312-600-8004. Again, email is better. 
but I'm happy to take a phone call if that's preferred for you. Talk to you all soon. Hopefully, I'll see some of you on the uh, premium newsletter later today. And for the rest of you, I'll talk to you next Monday for the free update. Have a great week trading.